EA Sports and the PGA Tour so proud to present the season-long race for the FedEx Cup. From the LA suburb of Pacific Palisades and Riviera Country Club, it's final round coverage of the Genesis Invitational. Well, this is the essence of golf distilled. 18 holes to decide our winner. Every decision is impactful. Every misstep, a potential tournament record as we look at the current leaderboard. We've currently got a tie at the top at five under par. Meanwhile, our featured golfer looking to cobble together a solid round here on this fine Sunday. Tough start to the morning here. That one a bit wild and into some early trouble. That just came out blazing. As soon as it hit the green, it was never going to stop. Not much left here for Birdie. Yeah, that's good, but it's a birdie here at one. And he will definitely not say no to that. So while you're looking to make birdie at number one, you'd be happy with a par four at this second hole. It's 471 yards, but the winds are a factor as a strong par four. This one starting a hair right. And that's going to miss the fairway. So after the birdie at one, he'll need to play his second at two from the rough. It shouldn't be too bad where he is. Uh, he should have a decent look at the green. That finished off for a par here at the second. And he'll remain in red figures at one under. Moving now to the 434 yard, par 4 third at Riviera. Best way to attack here is to carry that fairway bunker on the left to set up a good angle on your approach. Okay, that's going to be safely in the fairway, and that's where you need to play from if you're going to make a final round surge. Second shot coming up. Let's bring in Iona Steven. 
121 yards is the number we're looking at. And that wind, it's coming from right to left. So you might need to start this a little bit to the right-hand side. This one has a chance to be close. And maybe a little too pumped up there. That just flew past the flag, but still an outside chance for a birdie. Quite online, and that'll drift a couple of feet by. So that safely in. It's a par here at the third, and he'll remain at one under par. Well, this is just a great par three, 236 yards, the fourth hole. And as they like to say on tour, you can't fake this one. This will take your best shot, and you'd be happy with a three here. Boy, that one did not want to slow down at all, and it winds up running right through the green. Second shot now here at the par three. Ball wasn't sitting too bad. Rough not too long. Good decision on the flop shot. More importantly, well played. Okay, that one finished off. It's a par here at four, and he'll remain right where he is. Up next, Riviera's 434-yard par four fifth. A lot to worry about here. Canyon wall and OB on the right, trees down the left, and of course, the iconic grass mound, which cuts into the fairway short of the green. One turning left a bit off the tee. Well, that drive was enormous. I know it's in the rough, but that is long. From off the fairway, this is second at number five. It's a solid shot and a green in regulation, but a little away from the band. Let's bring in Nota Begay the third for a look at birdie. And this is not the place to be. It's a really tough side hill putt. He's got to push it out to the right and then just let it drift back to the hole. Oh, that never had a chance. Just five feet left. Yeah, that's good putt. It is a par here at the fifth. And he'll stay right where he is. You don't see this too often, do you? A bunker cut directly into the green. And usually bunkers are front or guarding the right or left side. This one smack in the center. It is one of the most unusual holes in all of golf, 169 yards, the par 3 sixth here at Riviera.
That's a nice job to carry it over that bunker onto the green, and this ball makes it up to the proper level. Safely in for par here at the sixth. And he'll remain right where he is. Moving on to the seventh, 408 yard par four with a massive bunker running down the left side and a barranca down the right. Fairway narrows considerably at the 270 yard mark, so accuracy off the tee, critical. Good for a while, but it's going to get gobbled up by that bunker. The late, great Bobby Jones always said the hardest shot in golf is the next one. And that's evidence there in that bunker. All you can do is just simply get it out. This from seven feet. Yep, well done. That's in for par here at seven. And he'll stay right where he is. The surprises don't stop here on Riviera's front side as we come to the 433 yard par four eight. One of course designer George C. Thomas's all time favorites. A split fairway is the unique feature here. Like many holes, this one forces you to really have a strategy. This is left all the way. Ah, too strong for this hole, eh? Ran out of fairway and into the rough. Big hit, though. Rich, there's one thing about good iron play. When you hit it and it comes off the club face, you know it's going to be close. More evidence there. Okay, right on line. That's a birdie here at the eighth. Will certainly help the cause. On to Riviera's ninth now at 458 yards. You get a look at the beautiful clubhouse in the distance, but don't let your mind wander from the task at hand. This is no easy hole. Bunkers line the fairway on both sides and three more greet you up near this elevated green. This started toward the left side. And 
and that a good looking shot there well placed in the fairway from the fairway we check in with Noda beautiful look at the ninth with the clubhouse in the background but players beware severely uphill whatever club you select add one more This one looks right on point. Oh, that was a good strike. Took it straight at it, too. That one bounce and check. Well played. A four footer here for Birdie. Yep, that's nicely done. It's a Birdie here at the ninth. And that is going to finish off a three under front side as they go out in 32. Well, this hole, the 315-yard par 4 10th, has been talked about so much. If you ask the professionals what's the best short par 4 in the world, most will point to this. It, it's all about options and that little sliver of a green which causes players headaches. This one is, is not just about the length, obviously, but it is a really strategic play. Rhythm is definitely there today. Another wonderful tee shot. Shouldn't be much in this for Birdie. the run here that a third consecutive birdie and he's going to move to four under par just one shot off the top spot again here's a hole where you know instantly you're at Riviera 583 yard 11th it's the second par five on the course but you, you look at those eucalyptus trees lining both sides of the fairway that's Riviera and then the grass barranca which is a couple of hundred yards from the green you have to factor that in on your second shot terrific hole Everything flowing really well right now. Coming off three birdies in a row. Here's another solid tee shot as well. That one had to feel good. Yeah, struck it so well. You could see that by the reaction of that ball when it hit the green. Landed so softly. Mm, the speed was right what you want, but the eagle putt doesn't go down. Everything going right now. That a fourth consecutive birdie. And he will definitely not say no to that. Up next, a toughie, the 479-yard par 412. It is a gentle left to right, so fading the ball is encouraged. Up near the green, beware of that lone sycamore tree known as the Humphrey Bogart tree, so named because he loved watching golf and relaxing under its shade. He just keeps motoring right along. Another good tee shot right there. Now, Noda, his second from the fairway. 
157 to the hole. Have to calculate the wind coming from right to left. And that's a good approach shot too. Just a little left of the hole, but a good chance for Birdie. Not to be a little short, but a, a good effort there. That one safely in. It's a par here at 12. And he'll stay at 500. Next, it's on to the 13th at 459 yards, where the 12th bent left to right. Number 13 goes the other way, trying to make you utilize all the shots in your arsenal. That's the mark of a really good design. This one again featuring a narrow landing zone leading up to a smallish heart-shaped green. Yeah, nothing to fault there. Good balance, good follow through, and a good start to this hole. Right side of the fairway here for this, his second. Ah, good shot again there. Well thought out. Landing the ball short, letting the ball run onto the green. And inside, oh, I'd call that a birdie putt. So that's birdie range. Oh, yes. Plenty of pace to get up that slope. It is in for a birdie. He will take over sole possession of the lead here midway through these final nine holes. Ahead now to the 14th, the par three at 192 yards. This green's on a slight incline and given the ocean air, probably plays a little longer than you think. The narrow green is flanked by two bunkers left and another to the right. And that's certainly not what you have in mind standing on the tee box. That never had a chance of hitting the green. And this will be a five foot putt here. Okay, good putt, and a par here at 14. And the lead will remain one. The 15th hole here at Riviera at 487 yards of par four. It is the number two handicap hole, so that can speak to its difficulty. The one well-placed bunker at the elbow of the dog leg must be avoided, and the green is believed by many to be the toughest to read on the course. so simple when you're going good, doesn't it? And that is yet another solid drive. To where the hole is cut, just about 190 yards, Frank.
good clean contact and a nice result and a chance for birdie coming up chance now for another birdie well and he's had great conversion on putts like this even when he's not close to the hole he's left himself with very makeable opportunities mm, boy that's a good stroke just a fraction off target but you can't get the speed any better than that Okay, a solid par here at the 15th. And the lead will remain at one with three holes left to play. The 16th hole at Riviera, the final par three of the round. It's a tough one at 166 yards. Hit it anywhere on the putting surface, you'll likely be just fine. Miss, and you're almost certain to be in one of the four bunkers framing the entirety of the green. I like the looks of this one. Oh, that's a good looking shot. Just left of the flag stick, and he'll have that left for his birdie. down for a birdie here at 16. And stop the presses if you've heard this before. He's well on his way to yet another victory on the year. Next up, the longest hole on the course at 590 yards, the par 517. He plays slightly uphill the entire way as it works toward the clubhouse and features bunkers on either side of the fairway. It's going to be up the left hand side. So that ball nestles down in the rough. Just got away a little bit on that tee ball. Okay, not too bad there. Now this for another birdie. Now that one's gonna go begging. He misses right. Frustration there. No problems there. That's a par here at 17. And this will stay a two-shot lead with one hole to play. Such a unique closing hole, the 18th here at Riviera at 475 yards. You're asked to hit your tee shot onto a 30-foot rise. It features hillside to the left and gully to the right from there. It is a tough approach into the amphitheater green. Yes, step one out of the way. It is in the fairway at 18. One more good approach shot could just about seal it. 
from the fairway. Let's go to Noda. Tough not to get distracted with the majestic amphitheater setting here at the 18th at Riviera, but be mindful, you must land the ball left of the hole to get it close. And safely on deck. That's the main thing, but from that distance, really don't want to leave yourself like a knee knocker, like a four or five footer. So this first putt's going to have to be good. Nah, that pace was okay, but that needed to be started a bit further out to the right. So a tap in there, that's for par at the last. That will mean it is a round of 64, seven under par, absolutely terrific. Frank unquestionably a satisfying victory for our featured player. Uh, you won 15 times on tours around the world, including the PGA Tour. What's the significance of the second victory? It's a great question, Rich, and, and I think that to answer you simply, it's huge, but to sort of uh, detail it more, the first one, there's always question marks. People tag around, is it a fluke? Were they lucky? Did they chip in on the last? So you work just as hard, if not harder, for the second one. And then when that happens, you feel validated and you feel finally over the hump. Till next time, 